Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, today we're going to have a pairing video and we're going to revisit one of the spiders that um, <coughs> we paired way back in the early days and we've not actually bred these for some time. Um, we've, done them a, we've done them a couple of times and were very successful. They, they worked really well. And that is in fact the Stromatopelma calciotum, which is commonly known as the feather leg baboon. Now these really are quite an exotic spider. Um, I love the colouring on these guys. You know, I, I do like all them autumny colours. They look really, really smart. Um, and you'll also see where they get their name, the feather leg baboon, because on their legs they are really, really quite feathery. You can see a distinct leg, like almost like a leg bone, if you like, going through, and then they just feather off. Really, really impressive. Very, very nice spider. Now. They do have a reputation for being a little bit on the um, fast and defensive side. Um, they're not really what I would class as a beginner spider. But that being said, if you're steady and you're calm, there's no reason why you can't handle one of these spiders. I mean, when I say handle, I mean look after, care for. Because we know here at the Beastie Room, we don't go into free handling. We don't bother holding our spiders. It's not something that we're really interested in doing. It does no good for our spider and it doesn't really do a lot of good for me either. So we tend to avoid it. Now, um, what we're going to do, we have got a lovely little male and you will see the difference in the size, the appearance, everything about this spider is, is just something else. They are really a sight to behold. So without further ado, Let's get on. Well, here we are, just about to introduce our little male. And as you will remember, we always introduce the male to the female's enclosure. Look at those feathery legs. Whoa, he's away. A quick demonstration of the legendary speed of the feather leg baboon. Now, um, as is quite often the case, with these little guys, he will go and hide at first. And he's stuck his head in the sand there, and he's doing what we call the ostrich position. He's, as far as he's concerned, if his head's in there, no one can see him. Now we left him in there for a good 15, 20 minutes. And as you can see now, we're actually moving him out. Because if we leave him there, he will literally stay there all day. So we're gonna move him out. Look at that. As soon as we moved him out and he's on that bit of web, he starts drumming and this is what we've been waiting for he's been in there long enough to settle down and as long as we move him really gently we can keep that nice calm disposition within that spider and as you can see there he is tapping shaking everything's going he's all excited now the vibrations that he is creating that fire through that piece of cork bark must be immense. Now our female, she is tucked right down in the bottom of that. And there is in fact two separate chambers there. And our male has gone to the wrong one. You can see where his feet are just dipping in. There he goes. He's going to have a little look in this one first. You see how he's got that really strong shake and it's almost like a flick of his body. That is probably sending an absolutely powerful vibrations through all the webbing and the surrounding area. Since we woke him up, he has not stopped. Look at that. See the markings on him? Absolutely gorgeous. You can see how these guys, when they're living in the trees and things, just vanish. Now we've come for a little bit better angle now. We're up on the top now, we're looking in. And you can see there that there is a tunnel to the far right. That is where she is. You can see where she's webbed the top of it over. So we know she's in there. There was no webbing on the one that he's looking for now. That was absolutely clear. So there you go. There's another little tip there. If you see the webbing on the top of the, of the, of the uh, entrances, you can pretty much guarantee that is the one she's hiding in. She will seal it off so that she can relax, sleep out the day, 
Any disturbance, that web will soon warn her of what's going on. Now he's down there. He's working his magic. He's um, tapping and shaking away. We can just see his feet. He's probably wondering, where on earth is she? The pheromones are strong. He knows there's one here somewhere. But where is she hiding? We're going to go a little deeper. We're going to have a little look. You can see the way his feet are moving. He is still vibrating, still shaking. He's gone down to the bottom. Still no sign of our female. Now, unfortunately, the camera does not pick up the drumming of our female. And she gave out an enormous big drumming uh, motion. And this has brought our male back up. He's now on the top. He's looking again. You can see he's a little bit. He's a little bit confused. He's like he knows she's there. She's just the other side of the wall. And you can see now he's drumming and shaking as well. We're back on track. You can definitely see the how they get their name, the feather leg. Look at that feathering on his legs. It's really quite pronounced in the males. And the females also, but the males really stand out, probably due to their size. They're quite a bit smaller. Now we need him to actually come out and start looking for her. Now these are the times where we have to be patient. We've got to let him work at his own pace. If we were to go in and disturb him now, we would ruin the whole scenario. He would lose his confidence. He would do a runner and go and sulk somewhere. Here he comes. Look at those legs. Oh my God, he is such a handsome, handsome little fellow. The colouring on these is exquisite. Now you can see there the petty pouch. You see the big boxing gloves on the end of them then. Look at that colouring. Now don't forget, when you're doing these guys, they are very, very fast. There you go, we can see the, the emboli there. You can just about make them out of big stubby ends to his petty palps. He's continuously shaking. He's sending the message across. There we go, he's tapping away. And we're just having a little rest now. We're seeing if we get anything back from our female. When she drums, he generally responds. And we've basically gone into a little bit of a quiet mode now. They both need to work out what's going on. Oh, here we go. A little bit of drumming from our female there, and he's picked it up. After all, this is a two-way conversation. Now you can see that when they actually drum, you'll notice with your different males, when you start breeding different spiders, that the actual um, the rhythm that they tap with their pedipalps is different for each one. And it's really, really quite interesting. We notice it very much with our pokies because they actually tap on the glass so we can hear them. And we often, you know, you can detect a different tapping rhythm between the different ones. It's really quite, quite special. His is very fast and rhythmic. You see that? You also note at the bottom of the right hand side there that piece of webbing there she is you just saw the legs down there that was our female now i was rather hoping she was going to come out through the bottom 
but it's looking like she's going to come out through the top. Either way, it's going to give a reasonably good position. Here she comes, there's her feet. He's hiding under the water bowl. Here she comes, tapping away there. Hey, look at that. Now you see the settee on her, on her legs. She's more red. Look at the black markings on them toes and on them legs. Absolutely beautiful. Here she comes. Oh my, look at her. She is a beast in comparison. Now what he's doing now is he's looking for the upper ground. He wants the higher ground. And I don't blame him to be fair. She is a whopping great spider. And you can see where we were saying about the, get the name, the feather leg baboon, how much more pronounced it is on him. Hers is quite sparse. Makes her look very hairy looking. Whereas he actually looks like he's got proper feathered legs. Now, now we've made contact. You see how they change. The tempo changes. Our male is literally spread eagled all over the place and he's looking for perches all the time. He's turning her around. He's gaining that high ground. You see how much more confident he is when he's up above her? She's very relaxed. Now these spiders have an awesome reputation for being um, pretty hot and um, very keen to defend themselves. But when you see them in a breeding scenario, our females are literally, look at her, she's like a puppy. And you can see there he's working away, he's doing his best. And he's tapping away there, he's looking for that epigastric furrow. And as long as you can see your male, as long as you can see his emboli flicking around like mad, you know you haven't got insemination yet, he's still searching. And then you'll see quite often when he actually finally does get insemination, you'll see him stretch out. There you go. He got it there. You just saw him pull her abdomen down. She changed her position slightly. He's still keen. Look, he's still working away. You know, she's not flexing her fangs or anything. She is very, very relaxed. Now this is quite often the state with um, with our female spiders. At this stage, they're normally fairly well behaved. They want the job in hand. There he goes. Look, he's having another little look in there. You notice how she's dropped back down on the bark. This is making it more and more difficult. It's sticking him between her and the cork bark in, in a, to enable him to actually inseminate. It's not a position he really wants to be in. Now we've changed the angle here. Now you can see he's got insemination. See how he pulls that abdomen towards him? There you go. Now you see where he's tapping? You can see he's not inseminating there. He's tapping away, tapping away. He's looking for it. There you go. He's got it now. It's very, very quick. It doesn't take very long. But you saw clearly there he inseminated twice then. And this is often all they need. A matter of a millisecond. That penetration is over and done with so quick. And he will do that a number of times as long as his confidence holds out. It's all about confidence. Now we're desperately trying to get different angles here because it's quite difficult filming these guys. Now we're back to the main camera now. And you can see there how, how his confidence changes depending on how deep he has to go. The further he's having to go down, you see how he's backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. He's not showing the same enthusiasm that he was in the very beginning when he had the, the real upper ground because she was off of the bark. It made the insemination much, much easier. He's not giving up though. Now at this stage in the game, we would class this as a really good uh, pairing. This is absolutely perfect. This is where we want to be. We have a nicely conditioned female. She's nice and calm. She molted out around about three months ago. And um, 
she is more than ready to breed. Now, she didn't breed at all last year. Um, I think it was the year before we actually paired her. So she's had a good long rest. And I do believe she's molted out twice in that time. You see our male has backed right off. You see how he's made that distance, but he's maintaining contact. His two first front legs are still on contact with our female. They're still holding her. This is so, so, look at that. Look, look, look. She's spurring him on. She's like, come on, my lover. Look at that. Has spurred him on no end. He's back in the game. Now, when it's tight like this and we can't really see a lot, we're really, really keeping an eye on the position of the male. While he's up there like that, we know he's not nowhere near getting in any insemination. <clears throat> but as he dives down deeper, we're looking at her abdomen and we're trying to see whether her abdomen gets pulled down towards him. If it does, we know we've got an insemination. If it stays as it is, we can pretty much guarantee that he's not managed successfully to penetrate her. You see how he's just, she's just that little bit too far away. It's really toying with his confidence. Keep an eye on her abdomen. This is what we want to see. We're just looking for that abdomen to get pulled in. And then we know he's hit the spot. There it is, just there. And again. He's got it there. There we go. That's insemination. You see how her whole body posture has changed. He's pulled right, pulled her right the way in. Absolutely perfect. Now we had two good solid inseminations there. She's still willing. See how the contact is permanently there. He will not let her go as long as he maintains contact. She knows. We're still actually caught in. He's backing out now. He's moving. Look, you notice that? Look, he's got one foot on her. One foot. What's going on? Yep, yeah, look, he's looking for a way out. He's actually pulled her all the way up. This is back where we started. Keep an eye on her abdomen again. Whoa! How fast was that? Here we are in slow motion. It's just... Whoa! Look at that! He's gone. And our female has gone straight back home. Absolutely perfect, perfect pairing. What a wonderful sight to behold. Well then, what did you think to that? <laughs> How pretty impressive, are they not? Now, um, you would have seen there, when he first started, we put him in and he dived down behind this piece of bark here. And there's, he can't get through because she's completely blocked that off. There's no way round through that part of the bark. So we left him sitting there. And he must have been sat there for probably 15 minutes or more. Not a movement, nothing at all. He's literally in hiding. And he's doing what I class as the bit of the ostrich pose. He's stuck his head in the sand and he's hoping to God no one knows what's going on and no one can see him. Now, when this happens, when we're breeding, if we've given them 15, 20 minutes and they are not moving, it's often best to just coax our male out nice and gently, get him back out into the real world and get him back into the job in hand. Because otherwise, we could sit there all afternoon just filming him fast asleep. So, we make the move, we move him out. And you'll see there that we moved him out nice and gently. And as soon as he came back out and he got onto the bark, you see how his, his demeanour completely changed. He started tapping and scratching away. And all of a sudden he was like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. I've got a feeling there's a lady around here somewhere. And it woke him up. And then he was off looking for her. And you'll see that he moved around. He went all over the place. In the back here, there is in fact two separate tunnels that she uses, which are completely independent of one another. You'll also see down in the front here, there is a hole down in the front at the bottom of the bark there. She uses that. That and the, and the, uh, the right-hand tunnel, as you're looking at it, 
is one separate tunnel and then there's another tunnel to the left of that which is another separate one they are completely separated well our little Romeo decided to choose the wrong tunnel and he went down the one that was she wasn't in and you can see how he went in there and he was looking away he was tapping and scratching all the time and then what brought him out what, what brought him out was her she all of a sudden come to life and started um, tapping and scratching away she really really went for it unfortunately i don't think the um the audio picks it up it just doesn't seem to register with it very well at all but it really went once she started drumming that was it he was back out he knew she was around it was just a case of finding her and in the end as you saw there she got a bit tired of waiting for him and she went out and found him which is quite often the case all of this tapping and everything they're communicating to one another and he would much rather her come and see him because this is the safest place for him, out in the open. He wants to be outside where it's safe. Once you get down in that tunnel, it's anyone's business. And uh, as you will see, she's a big spider, a very big spider in comparison to him. He's, he's quite diminutive, really. Now, um, you can see there, there was a lovely clip there where we saw the insemination. Now, when you're breeding your spiders, if you see them and their her body angle remains the same all the way through, especially with these types of spiders, quite often they'll get in there and when they inseminate, he will pull her towards him. If you may not be able to see the insemination, but you will see the change in her body posture. If her abdomen looks like it's been pulled in towards them, then you have pretty much guaranteed you have got an insemination. And these are what you're looking for because it's not always possible to be able to see the actual insemination perfectly well yourself. So we have to look at body posture, and this tells us whether we've got a success or not. Now, if it's something like an avic avic, you see when we've done them in the past, they're very, very gentle. They don't tend to pull. He literally does it like this, very, very gently. And often or not, we can see the same thing. If, if you see his pedipalps, are like this all over the place we've not got insemination if you see him doing this we've got insemination so these are different things to look for in the different species of spiders that you're breeding and each of them has a slightly different way of doing it and it's just about getting in tune with what your particular spider that you're breeding how it works and how it actually activates that situation so these are all little things to keep an eye out for and have a look. Now, normally, with these guys, one, one pairing is normally enough. Um, quite often, if we do do a second pairing, um, we tend to pair everything twice. Um, it's not always necessary, but it just gives a little bit extra guarantee and hope that you know out of them we would have got a successful pairing. We have seen on videos just recently where we've had really good pairings, but the actual um, the actual inseminations have been poor. We've had infertile sacs. So by doing them twice, you have a second opportunity to get it right. And this is what we normally try and do. Generally with these guys, when he goes in, if she comes out like a rocket, that's normally she's had enough. She's not she's not up for the game anymore. And um, Generally speaking, that would suggest that the first insemination worked really well. So these, again, another little tiny things to watch for. A real good tip when you're breeding your spiders is give your males as much room as you possibly can. When we have them on the desk here, you would have seen in the video there, when he'd done his job, he literally backflipped straight out and he was gone. There is no point trying to catch him at this stage. Let him run. Let him go. We got him on the desk. He ain't going to go far. So just let him go and then let him settle down for a minute or two if it's safe to do so. You know, if she's right after him, then it might be worth intervening. If you do intervene, always concentrate on securing your female. Don't worry about the male. Let him run. He can do, he'll, he'll pick him up later on. But concentrate on securing your female. She is the danger part in all of this. You may well try and catch your male and inadvertently 
you know, trip him up, giving her time to actually run in and grab him. So always concentrate on the female. Nine times out of ten, once it all parts up, the female just wants to go back home because she feels insecure out in the open. She just wants to get back and hide. So good tip there. Concentrate on your female. Give your male lots of room. Let him run away. And we just pick him up on the desk later on. Not a problem. Best way to do it. Just relax and let them do their thing. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Fingers crossed we will have an egg sack in a couple of months' time. These guys normally drop fairly quick. Um, and they normally have good sacks as well. We're looking at anywhere between up to sort of like 300 or more in a sack. So they have good, strong sacks. And uh, they're normally relatively easy to rear as well. But they are stunning, stunning spiders. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.